皇宫争先圣代。上午八点半，板桥碑院讲堂传授菩萨戒法会。联络电话：零二二九五一零三五五。一月十四号星期日，念阿弥陀佛，持斋除罪九十节。上午八点半，板桥碑院讲堂传授菩萨戒法会。联络电话：零二二九五一零三五五。一月十五号星期一，念药王菩萨，药上菩萨，持斋除罪七千节。上午十点，板桥碑院讲堂白度母长寿法会。联络电话：零二二九五一零三五五。一月十六号星期二，念释迦牟尼佛持斋处罪八千劫，释迦牟尼佛殊胜功德日，善行与恶行成就一倍。上午八点半，宜兰大悲观音道场八关斋戒、护生、供万灯、供万水暨甘露施食法会。联络电话。零三九八九九三一九。一月十八号星期四上午十点，桃园乐善寺那古塔前空地，护生点万灯供万水，即慈悲施施法会。联络电话：零三三四七七六六六，零三三三一零五五三。敬邀十方大德踊跃前往参加，阿弥陀佛。您现在收看的是生命电视台。First, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. Tashi dele. Tashi dele. Don't ask me what you do. Lasso. Don't ask me what you do. No, je. Masi no tashi dele kaya hago. Tashi dele means may you be filled with auspicious. Goodness and joy. And the third day, Yale University, I found out that Kashmir Miss Decision, I showed some things. Then I found out that it's a bit 
And I would also like to thank everyone at Yale University who has uh, been responsible for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to be here. And honestly, and I would also like to thank all of you who have come here today. university this is my third visit to the United States of America. And whenever I come here, I have a special feeling of freedom and joy, especially this time, the third time, as I've been visiting several universities, I've uh, been overjoyed by the experience of meeting with many students and witnessing a little bit of their study and university life. Now, the topic you've asked me to address is compassion and the environment. Background background to give you a little bit of background, uh, many people have asked me, uh, what inspired you to become so concerned about the environment? So I'm going to talk a little bit about that to begin. And modern development and I was born in a quite isolated part of eastern Tibet, and where I was born, uh, there had been no great uh, modern development. So I lived in a very natural and somewhat pristine environment until I was seven. Uh, this was the only environment in which I lived. So I experienced firsthand as a child a feeling of 
intimate connection with the natural environment. And I retain, to this day, a constant and extremely clear recollection of this. Holy Spirit, the living beings and the living system of the so necessary Babchu <laughs> Megan showing me that it is to Jan of Simbachi. Pollution channel, you know, the dead of cigar, just at the dead Tony. Counter Casue Kuzugi, Semanalolia, Nature Environment, G. Casue, Saturan, which may be The living systems, Rado, Fadan, Lutan, the dead to see which you stand. The dead to see so much show you how for example, where I was born, we regarded and experienced our environment as a living system, a, a living beings. The mountains, the sources of water, were all regarded as the dwelling places of what I would call holy spirits of various kinds. We therefore respected every aspect of the environment as part of a living system. We didn't wash our clothes or even our hands in a flowing a water sources. We didn't cast uh, any kind of garbage or any kind of other pollutant into the fire uh, in our hearth. So we regarded the entire environment as innately sacred. <laughs> artificial garbage artificial artificial Garbage One of the challenges that those who live in such an environment face nowadays is the use of uh, artificial and non-biodegradable uh, substances because for the first time uh, they have to deal with real garbage. We didn't really have garbage because we used pretty well everything up and anything that we did dispose of was uh, easily biodegradable. And now, because of the introduction of artificial materials that are not biodegradable, we, we have to come up with new ways uh, to dispose of them. And so this, uh, to give you one example, is uh, changing the lifestyle of people in such places. <laughs> Environmental 
Chundu philosophy dang tiga science da ke ke shingya mane ina tiga lia knowledge majungwe ngalia emotional somar ba tachi sonar de sosudang energy ka rang jung ki sonar di ngen chung digital knowledge jel chung ba se sang ti jun zan ten ka da tri ji gamjo ji ya bi hindustan e ti knowledge ji bo mai ba da de sonan da jebe thon e char ji yong do sam sam tu sing obviously as a child i had no knowledge of philosophy or science but i had a strong emotional connection with a strong feeling for the environment which means that now that i've begun to acquire a little bit of knowledge it isn't just knowledge for me it's based on my strong feelings yes amli a kajweda kuryu gi tada di kajweda um kuyu sungyo di kwalia azu samulo ta dona ji kajwe um chigle chigden samra ta ji azu gi ta nam yungi ni misidi ta kuyu sungyo di jabati kuyu dang azu jabati hako ba chebliya azu gi ene kajwe pinjun tudu da pinjun kajwe tinjun jabati hako ko ade kesem pri chade to sangdo I think that in order to understand the uh, necessity of environmental protection, we need to understand how connected we are to one another and to our environment. So in order to understand our, our connectedness, I think we need to understand interdependence. <laughs> Sawe se ji chembe ke tarang asu gi lu ndi ne ya kandar ngwe bu mang bu chil de ne chi rung jung gi ta ku de liya den che ma zu so gi wan che gwe bu chi ta ne gwe bu chi cha de ya res for example for us to uh, acquire or eat any food have clothes to wear or even to have the bodies we do all of these things require the interconnectedness uh, of many aspects of many things and many people within the environment cheza masulata sunzi ye message ro na be she de sunzi ye ola so object the subject masu je object the subject benji chi ge ranjung khuyu de pa chi object ndo chi masu subject ndo chi tindi chi gi kandar boundary chi samara ba tindi chi gi kashwe ti paru paru le ya partha ye ba chi tindi chi ga ju thong go are se sang a ju tindi ge partha di jang tha di nyer dong go ya chi ta boundary chi tis me ba so ga di ge chi bi cha de ba sang ti ga ju di ga ju de tin jung ge ta wa thal de chi the value of understanding interdependence in this regard is that we often feel at some distance from our environment. We divide the world into subject and object, and we feel that the external environment is an object separated from us by some kind of boundary and at some distance from we, from ourselves as subjects. We need to dissolve this artificial boundary and decrease the distance between ourselves and our environment. Today in this time, I see that around the Kuyu in Java, the Nomadi, the I see she do too much. I see that the Kuyu in Java, the Tanya do, do a lot. Don't do this and do this. Today, Chevy. And I think if we do that, we can begin to feel how connected we are to our environment and how little distance if any there really is between ourselves and our environment then the pebe nalolia chi gi kuryo dang nang gi semjin din jaba de bejun kar sharasana ne de chi gi bejun shat chi kuyo di 
ဒီနေ့ဒီဘက်ချက်နန်ကီစမ်ချင်းဒီကဒီကြူဒီဘက်ချက်ချီခုဒီကဒီငါဆိုလေစတိုင်းနိစမရဘဲဟိုလ်
our knowledge of the environment really uh, is a knowledge of something that's going to affect our lives, a knowledge of something that is going to affect our well-being. Today, you understand that the Chaudhary Mina energy, because spiritual traditions and around the religious tradition, the Zuigi, because the Shemshu Drutuya, and Shemdi Drutuya, and what because Shemdi Drutuya, the younger son of Ben, he says. And I think it is in that regard that spiritual and religious traditions can serve the cause of environmental stewardship. indigenous ดิเกตะกัลเจอร์ดัมดานิชิงาซูเอนเซสเตอร์ดิซูกิวิสดัมอ่าเอนชั่นวิสดัมดิซูกิเตนเดนดีทอลีมินาซูกิดาจิอิน
If we base our approach to environmental stewardship on being loving and compassionate, there should be no contradiction between science and spirituality. We can share, undertake and share our common responsibility for this environment. And in that way, actually put into practice and make practical use of the information that scientists give us about the environment and not live as though we are in denial of it. Himalaya the Himalaya, including the Tibetan pla and the Tibetan plateau, are uh, considered a, a treasury of water that feed uh, the great rivers of Asia and therefore supply so much water that they, sometimes the, the Himalaya is called a third pole. Therefore, we have to be especially concerned with the environment in the Himalaya and the conservation of water there. So what we have uh, tried to do is train uh, monasteries and best Himalayan monasteries and best environmental practices so that they can then present these uh, to their local or neighboring communities. Knowledge, when this subject was first introduced to representatives of these monasteries, they were immediately emotionally affected and demonstrated tremendous commitment to environmental stewardship in their region. But at the same time, we lack a scientific knowledge and a technical expertise. So in order to do this, we need the support of the scientific community and the assistance of the scientific community. And I mention this as an example of how in order to preserve our environment, we all need to work together and offer our individual skills and knowledge. <laughs> I'm going to uh, end my initial uh, address or talk with that and we'll begin the uh, conversation. Before we do, however, I again want to thank each and every one of you 
uh, for coming here and uh, convey to you my sincere delight in having this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness, and thank you, Translator. Yeah. We wanted to begin by picking up on a point that you've made earlier yes. about the root of compassion is having a steadfast heart, the power of the heart. And this work with the environment for many people can be discouraging because it's so overwhelming mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So could you speak about this need for a steadfast heart, the power of the heart mm -hmm. in compassion? Mm -hmm. Daddy, activist, some of The activist, Ilya, uh, activist Marche, Tinane, Kajreda, Kuruk, activist Marche, this emotional child, Marche, Daisy, Kajreda, G, Kuzugi, Bezuman, which he young, the Sancho, you are twine, maybe in the Marche, Kondolanding in the Chadisha. Not towards, at least, near towards. Well, first of all, I would say that. Um, many activists, and especially environmental activists, um, naturally become highly emotionally invested in their activism. And when after years and years of very hard work, they don't see a great deal of result, they can become a little bit uh, embittered and angry. <laughs> and if you spend enough time listening to one dire prediction about the future of this planet after another from environmental scientists, even we listeners uh, can uh, develop a little bit of a problem in our brains. <laughs> yeah. understand <laughs> I think there are two levels or types of activism, and the one is what we all uh, practice. We can practice it by being uh, supportive of intensive activism. But even if we uh, are in denial of the need for environmental activism, because we're having an effect on the environment, you can call it a type of mere activism. <laughs> Some <laughs> The other type of activist is what we would normally refer to as an environmental activist, and that's someone who intentionally undertakes responsibility and puts great effort into the achievement of, in this case, environmental goals and changes. I think that one thing that's very important is for uh, those of us who are less directly involved to take some responsibility and be supportive uh, as much as we can of environmental activism because if you look at the situation there is absolutely no reason not to support environmental activism. <laughs> Vegetarians 
To use myself as an example, I'm a vegetarian. And becoming vegetarian, which in my case is partly for environmental reasons, uh, is something that anyone can do. It doesn't require an organization, it doesn't require the extensive scientific knowledge or anything like that. But nevertheless, as simple as it is, when you do that, when you make that kind of change in your life, it's very encouraging because you realize that you are not without power. You have the ability, even as one person, to do at least something that is beneficial to the environment. <laughs> I think that the greatest source of courage for us in environmental stewardship comes from making such simple changes in our lives and realizing how much power we do have. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so Your Holiness, just to follow up on that last point, you raised the question in The Heart is Noble where you said, what does it take for our ideas to move our heart? So that is, what is it that moves us to overcome our habits and desires like meat eating or mass consumerism? So I wonder if you could say a little bit about what it means to move past good intentions and move into actual action. <laughs> Um, actually, you can repeat that again. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, Your, Your Holiness, you, you mentioned yourself. Uh, you've written before and in talks that you've given that when you were quite young, you were yeah. fond of eating meat, mm -hmm. but you had the good intention of giving that up. You now yeah. are vegetarian. Yes. And that is taking a good intention and putting it into Still, action. I like meat, but it's okay. But many people wonder how to take a good intention and to actually okay. put it into practice. Okay. Well, to use the example you brought up, my vegetarianism, as you mentioned, as a child, I ate meat. In fact, I only stopped eating meat about eight years ago. So I kept on eat, eating meat um, for many years, but I knew it was wrong. I still ate it. And Dana Singi Tamjawa Samana, Tamjawa Tajo, the Nijiguada, Kesim Chadi, Madison, Tango, Tamjad and King Kurudi, and Susugi Susu Susulia and Gain, which could Susu Susulia, Tamjawa, Chese, and Susuki Takar Langati, Savage Sogati, Matsulia, Bengay or something else. In that type of case, I think that. It, it, the, the bridge is a type of compassion, a type of courage, the, the, the power of your heart. And by the power of your heart, I mean that which enables us to decide once and for all to take responsibility for our own actions as individuals, to be able to commit ourselves to accepting and fulfilling our responsibilities as a person. Mm -hmm. 
So the bridge is that a mere understanding become a more emotionally felt and a deep emotional feeling based on understanding will inspire us to take action. Once we, once we listen to uh, the advice of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You spoke on science and religion, a very important topic, a very complex topic. I'd love you to speak a little bit more because for many years, mm -hmm. scientists have been speaking yeah. about climate change yeah. and the environment. Mm -hmm. And now, there's a new moment mm -hmm. when some scientists are saying this is no longer an issue of science alone, mm -hmm. but a moral issue. Mm -hmm. And that's what your work encourages us in yeah. this new dialogue of yeah. science and religion. Can you speak on that? Wow. <sighs> uh, あ、それで、カルチュレーター。で、コンクスムネシで。クユグネデンデ、パンランゲネデンシャレンドソンドス。で、モロイシュ。ハバドンアンジュギ。クユネダンデデ、クルシュネダンヨンゴエチュギデカ
um, factor in it that makes it a moral issue is that the degradation or destruction of the environment has been caused by human greed. And our human greed, uh, bad enough as it is to start with, has only been exacerbated, fed, by our media and our advertising industry. The problem we face, therefore, is that human desire is limitless. But environmental resources are limited. And therefore, it is our responsibility as those who depend on these resources to rein in and control our greed. In order that we, we start doing so, it is essential that religious leaders, spiritual leaders, spiritual teachers not only preach about individual practice issues or, or individual moral codes, but also about global issues and that they provide in moral guidance on environmental stewardship because they are the ones who can evoke feeling, mm -hmm. evoke enthusiasm, evoke an emotional commitment uh, in their followers. Until we accept the fact that our environment is not external to us, it pervades us, it's within our bodies and our minds as well, it will be difficult for us to, to change our behavior. But the key to becoming really motivated to change the way we live and uh, thereby begin to heal the environment, the key that will open the door to that type of motivation seems to be in the hands of those religious and spiritual leaders who are willing to provide moral guidance concerning the environment that is based on sound scientific knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So to take the conversation in a slightly different direction, Your Holiness, you spoke about the practice of dissolving the distinction between subject and object, the inner and outer worlds. And of course, there are many techniques for putting that into practice in meditation. You can study about that. You can uh, practice it. But I wonder, does the practice of cultivating, of dissolving that distinction naturally lead to a feeling of connection for the environment, for an appreciation of the environment? The practice of the on the other, and dancing yambegu, meditation tone, dancing yambegone. The house sound lodge, did you so I ever chicken in the sun? Maran did you so I ever mission that did you so I ever in the sun? On some chicken sound that you take on meditation. What kind of these? That digi cartoon as you get dancing yambegi, la ling toilet. Yam ling toilet charge it is on the other. Dangashi Wholeheartedly, some hundred percently, to carry your sort of a charge, the on the order. Tarana Singi, Teda Yamaduchi, Azugi, Kuyu, Tolly in Binia, then the Engi Teda Yamachi, Kashrezi Yamle, Sanada, meditation, then the Rudin, the Chai, get you some ten of those. We have uh, a number of meditation practices, as you mentioned in your question, concerned with dissolving, dissolving excuse me, the uh, false boundary between self and other. One of these is contemplating the equality of oneself and others, which is fundamentally developing an empathetic uh, recognition that just as I want to be happy and not suffer, uh, so uh, do others, and that in that we're exactly the same. 
And once you have taken this to heart, then of course you have to put it into practice and live accordingly. We also do meditations on exchanging oneself for others, where you actually imagine yourself in the position of another and that other in the position of yourself. When you try to imagine as wholeheartedly, as 100% as possible, how they feel, what they're going through, and then apply that. So there should be ways to extrapolate from these techniques and apply them to environmental awareness. ตัดดิคุซุพางุติเนจิกอดบะงาซุคุซุตางาดงาซุงุงาซุตางาดคุซุงุติเนจิดุซันตัดดิจิงาซุนมจิงตองเลงกิชาดิเนจิซามตองม